So, telephone mum, um, I was with Joe. She turned around to me and said, it's bad news, you know, Tony's in hospital. Um, didn't know how bad it was. And then when we got back, we found out it was a concussion. And we're not sure how to deal with it. Each night I breathe, I don't wake up. Loads of coins. What coins do you want? Take whatever coins you want. Take four quid. Four quid? I can't, just, can't afford that. <laughs> yeah, take that. It's not like just a company over here and you turn up and like do some stuff sometimes. It's like when you're away, it's like you're away as a family. I can't believe we got this far. I myself it feels Like, I love going away with them, that's the team. I know that every time I go away it's going to be good. So everyone's like super happy and positive and like enjoying it. They're such a family team as well, like it is it's family run, which makes everything very tight knit and we all get quite emotional if something doesn't go to plan or does go to plan. <laughs> I was actually there when um, when Tani went down, um, the crash that, that caused the, the concussion and the symptoms. We were riding at a, at a UK event, um, Vantajam, um, the summit of a lot of UK riders coming together to just um, have an athlete jam day. Oh. Yes, Tani. <gasps> oh, oh, she's down. Oh, God. Tani very simply came up short on a jump and got bucked, came up short on the jump, got bucked and went over the bars and went down pretty hard. Yeah, just something didn't feel quite right. Like normally after a slam you kind of get back up and brush it off and you start to feel better as like the night goes on or like we don't feel great but it's, you get, you get like a typical feeling. Like I've, I've hit the deck so many times that I know what it, it's going to feel like. You right, Tani? Yeah. But that was just different, like it felt like there was something in my head that just wasn't making sense. You know, I was in the Culver when I took her to the MRI and to see her kind of just falling apart in front of my eyes was probably one of the hardest things I've dealt with. So, you know, obviously, Fort Williams out. You know, there's no way she can take part. And to be honest with you, at one point, I didn't even know whether she'd be kind of fit enough to walk into a crowd. Yeah, I decided to go to Fort William just because I think I wanted to be with the family, I wanted to be with the team, they make me laugh, I feel comfortable there. So it was either that or I stayed at home alone and there was no way in how I was staying alone at that point. Like I say, just any, any bit of stress for me has just been like absolutely not until now because just my brain couldn't handle it. Mechanicing. Oh, there you go. Oh, it's moved a bit. Oh well. Does that look okay? What do you reckon? No, do. It looks diabolical, Phoebe. <laughs> <laughs> it looks diabolical, Phoebe. <laughs>
motorway driving is so much easier, a lot easier. Um, whereas the smaller towns, a little bit nerve wracking. I'm so stoked we're going up there with Phoebes for the first time. It's her first home race. You know, um, it's Dennis's first time in the league and chaos is just coming on stronger and stronger. And not only that, you know, when he doesn't do well, the role that he takes to look after the others and make sure they're doing well, I'm pumped for Fort William and I can't wait to get up there. What did you do? <laughs> Are you seeing that? Go on. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, when did that happen? Why have you not said anything? I haven't found the words to tell you. I haven't found the words. How about? Oh, I crashed my car. Uh, so bad. Then go! How am I going to feed these cars? They just didn't stop. Into fence you know when it doesn't do that next time? I... What the fuck did you do? <laughs> <laughs> Marcus, <Martin's> up. <there. laughs> <laughs> that's a big wreck. That's a huge wreck. That's not a look. That's not, ooh, that's not a big wreck. We are. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> what did your mother say when you rode that? Well, Mum. <laughs> Some gobshape from the town had been like, text the mum saying, oh, sorry to hear about Phoebe in her car. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't said anything yet. <laughs> no, you haven't. Do me something like that. Yeah, so this is Phoebe racing her first UCI race with FMD at Fort William. This is her home race. So Phoebe had a lot of mixed emotions at the end of Lords. She finished second. So she's po she podiumed, so you can't complain at that. She had an amazing run. She absolutely slayed it. She knew that she rode incredibly well. We're incredibly proud of her when she, she finishes in that second place. But Phoebe wants to win. That's it. She comes to win and she's there to win. She just reminds me of me when I was that young and she's so naive and she's so excited and like all those emotions that are just so raw and so present. I genuinely believe in, like believe in VB, like the way she does, like the way she rides, the way she loves riding, and like the way that she wants to improve, like always, like she wants to be the best. Yeah, I think she's gonna do insane. Uh, what do you think about the track? It's a super long track, insanely rough, rocky. Just pretty much going down the side of a mountain. It's pretty insane, pretty insane, really. Fort William, it's like so exposed, open rock boulders, wind. It's granite and hardcore gravel, which is man-made, kind of in between the natural granite. It gets progressively rougher and rougher, more gnarly, as we get down here to this point below the deer gate. So either way, you're just gassed. It's a really physical track, so. Wow. <laughs> oh. There's a rock that deep into one of the corners in the rocks. I'm bugging. So. Unbelievable. Yeah. It's a carnage. That is the most carnage run. That's borderline shouldn't be racing like, really. Like. The physical, the physicality of it is so savage for a human being to do. <laughs> you have to like enter a different mindset I feel like. Give it hell where you can find grip. Yeah. Take it back off where you can. Simple isn't it really? Simple is down here isn't it? Isn't it so easy? So easy? <laughs> no it's actually the hardest thing in the whole planet. <laughs> <laughs> Well, can I have one bit without a camera? Chaos has got a bit of an issue going on with his shoulder. I guess he took a crash at Dark Fest and then hasn't really healed up. Fort William's a super physical track. He's not feeling anywhere near 100%, can't really hold onto the bike. Feeling the pressure as well of like, what am I, what am I delivering if I'm here but not racing? Why do you want to do this? Mm. We don't see that. If we're being honest, we don't see that anymore. It's up to you. It's your decision. I'm not going to fucking tell you you've got to go up there and do whatever. I'm not going to do that. Like, you've got to be 100% happy with your decision as well. 
There's never an ideal moment for what you're trying to do right now because you're trying to put it both together. And most of the time, you're hurt. I think arguably, deep down, we know it's more valuable for him not to race. No, I know. So then just be straight up with it. Well, I just, other than taking then his bike away now. Tell him, if you tell him what you want to do, he's going to still feel pressure. I reckon you just got to be. You're not. You're not. Well, now he knows that we're talking about him. <laughs> okay, it's literally been most of my life tra like traveling with the team. So it'll be, it'll be weird not to do it. That's what I'm most scared about. Like, whenever, like, oh, why are you still racing? It's like, I was, I was like, one, I like it, but two, I'd be like, what would I do in my summers? So that's why I'm like, I want to stay because it's like what I've always done and I love it. Like, I love being here. The guys went very well today. BB uh, qualified first um, with a gap of 13.5 seconds as well, which is an absolute lead um, and gives her a lot of room to play with. Happy. Very happy. Yes, very happy. Uh, pretty tired, but I'm pretty stoked and we've got a bit of work to do for tomorrow. Really. You might need to put subtitles on that bit. <laughs> I think you might have to have subtitles for all my sections. At least you're moving your mouth now. My mouth is moving. Yeah, see, look, oh, look, we understood <laughs> that. Not when you go like this, eh. we don't understand when you just go like this. Eh. I like, actually love Fort William. Like, so many people hate it, but I love it. Being in Scotland and stuff, like, it's sick. It's so cool. Not like many other tracks, I don't think, really. I think I did my first Fort William race when I was like 11, 12. I just meant like so much. Like, I think that one meant more than any race I've done before. It's a home race. I had, I had mates there, you know, like, I had people that I knew there. My family was there. I've, I've dreamed of racing Fort William since I've ridden it. There is, a, like, there is pressure, like, I put on myself to do well. I have to put all the work in all the week as well, and like your whole team's putting work and everything. Like, but then if it doesn't go right, it's just like one run can literally make you like insanely happy. I just like, not stoked at all, really. It's a tough old course, man. Can be brutal. Oh. We'll just have to wait and see. I don't think I'll ever feel something like her that bad. Uh, you feel like kind of lost in a way, and like empty. You're, just like, you're kind of shocked at what happened. It, it's so funny because like I still got second. Second at a World Cup is still like, I'm still so like so stoked on that. When I was that close with that mistake, like, yeah, it sucks. 
There's not much someone can say to you after that happens that's going to make you feel any better, really. You know, when she lost in Fort William, my heart sank. Like, that was her race. And on, on paper, that was hers to take, you know, but I think she learned a huge lesson that week and it couldn't have gone, in my eyes, it couldn't have gone better for her because it would have just sparked up a fire and a roar inside her to then, you know, go and, and fight, fight for it. And I remember saying to her, yeah, but would you rather be a junior girl at Fort William or Tane Seagrave? So surely you'd rather beat me. So just wait till you're elite and then beat me and imagine how much better that would feel. Even though riding is everything and um, like you want to do the best you can and everything like that, like it is just a race at the end of the day. It's not going to define you on that one day. Like Phoebe's insane, like she's so good. Like it was just one mistake and like don't let this just ruin you because it's like you're better than it. I don't start missing their team and stuff, for sure, when I'm back home. Yeah, I just like, miss the whole vibe of the team, I think. We're all kind of like a big family when we're away. Like, we're super close. I'm always like, super excited to go away. You know, like, I know it's going to be a good time. Even like coming down to Wales and stuff, I just know that when I'm with people on the team, I'm going to have a good time. Everyone, everyone there is enjoying what they're doing, you know? They're there for a reason, it's because they love it. It means so much to me. Like, it's been, it's been my life for God knows how many years now. I love the friends that I've made with it, like the like other family members that I've made. If I was on a different team, fucking hell, I would have left like God knows how many years ago. But because of the team and because of the environment and because of how we are as one big family, I never wanted to leave it. It's extremely rewarding and not just results wise. You know, the reward can come from just happy people. And as long as you've got happy, stoked people in what you're doing. If people are stoked to be within that team and that team that you've created, then job's done. My whole life has been dedicated to my team. When that kind of felt like it was taken away and I, I felt super lost, I felt like my identity had just gone. As a father I'm praying she's okay. Uh, and as a team, you know, we're praying that she's okay. And she's now just wanting to get back to, to being Tiny. And at the moment she's definitely not, so hopefully beyond Fort William we'll, we'll see Tani come back. I couldn't move, like I was, I was so, it sounds so dramatic now but it's insane, like it consumes you. Like she was completely different for a bit and then she wasn't herself. Got to a point where I thought like if this carries on, I can't live like this. Fucking she Nizzy, the long walk this monster by. He fucking lives out there, out there, out there. I'm not even doing jingle, jiggle, 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 it falls. I'd like to see you wiggle, wiggle. For sure. <laughs> you guys are still here. Well, I may as well tell you about this bad thing. This is the custom Howie Roll Canyon Spectral CS7. It's a medium, it's pink, and it's insane. To win this beast, all you have to do is subscribe to the Canyon YouTube channel and comment under any of the Howie Well episodes. Entries close on the 20th of January 2023 and you only have the chance to enter once. And the full terms and conditions, they're just below. And by the way, if you guys don't enter, 
I'll happily keep it. Oh. You're right. Yeah. <laughs> 